So good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Tech in 20 demonstration of Aruba Edge Connect. Aruba Edge Connect unifies SD-WAN routing, firewall, segmentation, WAN optimization, and application visibility and control in a single centrally managed platform, forming the foundation for secure access service edge architecture. Today's demonstration will be given by Mike DeVita, Principal Mobility Architect, and Pratik Bajaj, Network Architect at Vandis. We are recording today's demonstration, so a quick reminder to keep your phone or computer, computer microphone muted to eliminate any background noise. Feel free to submit your questions in the chat window and we will go through them at the end of the session. For those of you who are new to Vandas, Vandas provides managed services and IT solutions to optimize security and performance of network infrastructures, both on-premise and in the cloud. We design IT solutions to meet each organization's unique needs and goals. For over 38 years, from mid-market to enterprise clients, Vandas has delivered comprehensive strategies for secure IT infrastructures. And now I will turn it over to Mike and Pratik to begin the presentation and demonstration. Good morning. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Pratik, Network Architect at Vandas. Let's jump right in. All right, so just a brief introduction about Aruba. Aruba has been placed in the, um, uh, in the Gartner's Leader Magic Quadrant for about for 16, um, 16 times. And in 2021, it was placed in the Leader, court, um, leader Magic, Magic Quadrant for Van Edge Infrastructure. It was also recognized in 2021 as Gartner's Peer Insight Customer's Choice for Van Edge Infrastructure. In 2020, Aruba and HP acquired the Silver Peak SD WAN solution and added it to, to their portfolio. A bit about Vandis's partnership with Aruba HP. Vandis has a close working relationship with Aruba HP for about 15 years. We are a platinum partner, and we have one of the largest bench of certified Aruba engineers in the Northeast. Uh, Vandis sits on the Aruba Advisory Council. All right, let's jump right into the technology. Why Aruba Edge Connect? The Edge Connect SD-WAN platform is a self-driving, self-healing SD-WAN solution. It basically unifies routing, firewall segmentation, WAN up, application uh, visibility, and control. For the SASE application use case, we, and, and it can basically helps to connect securely from remote sites and data centers via our applications are in your data centers or hosted in the cloud. For as far as the end user experience goes, it basically delivers a seamless use case of applications uh, where in, uh, the Silver Peak solution can identify above 300 million applications and 10,000 web domains, and they basically seamless deliver, seamlessly deliver these applications irrespective of where they're hosted. Some of the key features of the solution, we start off with the ZTP, the Zero Touch Provisioning. This is to basically speed up the deployment of the, the Edge Connect appliances at your branch locations where you're short on IT staff. It, you can basically drop ship an appliance, have the staff on site connect, and basically you can get a site up and running within a matter of minutes. And this is seamless irrespective of where the, the branch site is. It could be your branch site or it could be connecting to your workload securely into the cloud, be it AWS, Azure, or GCP. The dynamic path control feature helps to steer traffic and basically irrespective of the underlying link, be it broadband or MPLS, it can deliver uh, it can deliver high performance for end to end for the users, irrespective of the applications they are trying to access and where they're hosted. The WAN hardening option basically encrypts your traffic with uh, AES two fifty six bit encryption end to end, so it it uh, prevents for unauthorized access of your application by intruders and avoid uh, cyber attacks and man man in the middle attack. Some of the features continued. Um, so path conditioning. Basically, what this feature does for you is, irrespective of the underlay and the, the brownout conditions, your users will get, get consistent application performance and, and visibility of the application. The first packet IQ use case basically helps you to identify the, uh, the like I said, 300 million web domains and 10,000 SaaS applications, which are the signatures of the applications which are updated on a daily basis and, and pushed to your orchestrator and edge connect appliances. So you don't have to basically, uh, for example, if you're connecting to Zoom uh, securely, 
you don't have to basically write policies around Zooms and their ever-changing IPs and ports. You just subscribe to the application Zoom and put that in your overland, uh, in your bio. You will be able to securely access Zoom. The feature Boost basically is the, the Silver Peaks uh, secret sauce of WANOP, wherein they basically can uh, optimize performance applications for real-time applications like void traffic, teams, et cetera. And, and you don't, the, the way the boost feature is licensed is it doesn't apply to all your traffic. So you get an opportunity to, to check and apply it to the applications which matter to you the most. The way it basically uh, works is, is it avoids and take, reduce, reduces the dedupes and, and uh, repetitive transmission of data. All right, some important terminology. The orchestrator. The orchestrator is the end-all, be-all, single pane of glass for the solution, and it can be deployed in three models. You can have it in a VM in your, sitting in your data center. You can deploy the orchestrator in an, any public cloud offering, be it AWS, Azure, GCP, or you can subscribe to Aruba's uh, SaaS offering, where, which is orchestrator as a service, where you don't have to maintain or deploy the orchestrator. You just subscribe to the service. You can define your regions where you want the orchestrator to be spun up, and you can manage it. And Aruba manages for you. You just have the you just get a tenant and an access to manage your devices. Zero touch provisioning. Zero touch provisioning is basically, as I touched upon earlier, the quick and easy way to deploy these remote offices without with minimal IT staff and manpower available at these locations. The overlay. The overlay is the secure encrypted van tunnels which are formed once these appliances are online and they can quickly communicate with each other in a secure fashion. The underlay is the actual MP, your MPLS, your DIAs, your broadbands of the world, which essentially enable you to connect, uh, connect your sites. And it's, it's the, the benefit of using an SD-WAN solution is you don't have to pay for the expensive lease lines or, or some sort of uh, managed lease line with your provider. And you can pr pretty much use a commodity internet, your broadband circuit, to kind of build these overlay tunnels and route traffic over it. The business intent overlay of the technology is basically what makes the magic happen, wherein you can classify your application, your traffic flows in one of the seven bios which you can spin up on an orchestrator, and you can classify real-time traffic, you can classify your SMBs, you can cl classify your database traffic, and it will fall through the bios and once uh, basically make the, make the magic happen, wherein you can have select your underlays and add them to the bios and and the traffic will match on the one of these bios and get routed appropriately and mike will touch more on these bios in, as when he does the demo subnet sharing subnet sharing is is a way where silver peak enables you to quickly set up your remote site the LAN side of it and don't have to involve uh, advanced dynamic routing protocols like ospf pgp which obviously are supported but with subnet sharing, you can quickly advertise your, your local LAN subnets into the WAN subnets or into the WAN. All right, this is the architecture for the demo today. Um, and Mike will speak again to it in a, when I turn it over to him. But we have two locations for the purposes of this demo, San Francisco and New York. We will be originating traffic from two of the machines which are sitting in the San Francisco location and be streaming and, and sending VoIP traffic over to the New York location. And then we will basically be introducing some latency to kind of show you the real value of the solution where if you're matching on, let's say, the, the real-time bio, you won't actually notice if there is a brownout or a packet loss or the circuit is degraded in any form, way, shape, or form. In, and, and your traffic will continue to, to, to flow as unaffected. All right, with that, I will turn it over to Mike for the demo. Mike? All right, thanks, Pratik. I'm going to uh, take over sharing. All right, uh, Pratik, you can see my uh, browser window, correct? Yep. Okay, so I just want to make sure sharing was good. All right, so as Pratik said, this is kind of the demo environment here. We've got two locations that that are connected, that are front-ended with the Edge Connect appliance that, uh, you know, orchestrates the tunnels and the connections between them. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at our Unity orchestrator, which as Pratik said, is our is, is the brain is the brains of the operation, right? It's, it's managing all of your devices, managing the tunnel, tunnels and your configuration. So the first thing I want to kind of delve into and explain is 
the business intent overlays and how they're configured and how they apply to this demonstration. So the two uh, overlays that we're going to be looking at today are our real-time and our default overlay. And these are kind of the two extremes, right? Your real-time traffic is typically your most protected traffic. It's the stuff that you want to make sure it gets delivered and gets delivered uh, reliably. So that would be your you know, voice and video applications, things that are very susceptible to, to packet loss. So we'll look at those settings in a minute. And the default overlay is kind of our catch-all. Uh, your business intent overlays are processed like a firewall policy. So it's, you know, you can see the priorities on the left. It's top down, first match wins. So whichever overlay the traffic matches is where the traffic is going to fall. So the first thing in the overlay that we'll look at as we look at the configuration is our matching conditions, right? So there are a number of applications that are already predefined in here. And for the purposes of this demonstration, there is an additional port that was added to this overlay. So all of these overlays are customizable to fit your business needs. Um, port 5001 is going to be our protected data stream and port 5002 is actually going to be our unprotected data stream. So the big difference here is how we're configuring our link bonding policies. So your link bonding policy dictates how the system is going to handle that traffic. In its most extreme case, we have high availability and what that is effectively going to do is take the example of a an overlay tunnel with with two underlay uh connections right so two internet circuits you know an internet circuit a mpls circuit doesn't really matter um what it's basically going to do is it's going to duplicate all of your traffic across both of those tunnels so that if there is any kind of loss across either of them the far side is able to pull the packet from the other stream to reconstruct the the, the stream on the other end um, so it does require a Silver Peak appliance on either side, but you know the chances of you losing the same packet, even in a you know a spotty internet connection or a brownout type condition, it's pretty slim that you're going to lose the same packet across both of those circuits. So the end user will effectively see will not see a um, an impact to that traffic. So that's our our real time overlay, and then when we look at our default overlay, we can see that our matching conditions are effectively. Um, it matches everything else, right? So this is going to be our catch-all bucket for everything else that doesn't fall into either of those, any of the other overlays. Um, and in this case, we're using our high efficiency link bonding policy, which is basically just going to uh, load balance the traffic across both of those, um, across both of the available circuits, uh, which is why if you look at the bandwidth efficiency, we only get a 50% bandwidth efficiency in the high availability case because we're effectively duplicating all our traffic for each packet we're sending to. And then in our high efficiency, we get full utilization. So if you had two, you know, 100 meg circuits for argument's sake, you would end up with 200 megs, meg of aggregate bandwidth across the, the overlay. All right. So what I'm going to show you here is uh, I have two other tabs running that are monitoring our traffic across our real time and our uh, default overlay tunnels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start our, our protected and our unprotected streams uh, using these controls on the right side. And what we should see in a, in a couple seconds is we should see traffic start to flow um, and, and match into the real time overlay. And as we saw from the bio, that's because this stream is using port 5001, which we've classified in our real time uh, in our real time bucket. Um, and as you can see, we still don't see any traffic in the default because we haven't started the unprotected stream yet, which I'm going to do now. However, the underlays, as we see as that's starting up, do have traffic on them because the underlays are, are common amongst all of the all across all the overlays um, or can be. They don't have to be, but in this case, they are. Um, and we can see here that we, we're starting our traffic here. Right. So now we've got traffic flowing across both of these overlay tunnels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over to here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to introduce some loss on on these circuits to show you what uh, what that looks like. Right. So I'm going to start with our Internet circuit. And we're introducing a 1% um, a loss on the internet circuit. And what we should see when I should have explained this is this live view here is measuring the bandwidth and the loss across these circuits. So until I introduced that loss, both of these circuits were healthy, uh, which would hopefully be your standard operation for, for these types of situations. Um, but as you can see here, we're starting to see loss on our internet circuit. So this would be you know, a situation where you had had a brownout type condition where you were seeing some packet loss, but weren't necessarily a, a full circuit down, which is probably the most common situation and would impact performance the most, right? If the circuit goes down, it's easy to take that circuit out of service or have, you know, it, it taken out of rotation, but it's these intermittent packet loss type situations that really do 
you know, impact end user performance and experience. So as you can see, the, the orange here represents the fact that we're seeing that loss and that we're violating our, um, our SLAs here where we're, we're, we're seeing this loss. But when we look at our real-time overlay, we're seeing zero loss that's observed on the overlay itself, right? So because what it's doing is it's using the, the data from the MPLS stream or the MPLS circuit here to reconstruct that packet on the other side. Um, and we can see, you know, in, in contrast, and this is, you know, a, a simple example, um, we are seeing in, a loss now on the on the overlay tunnel for this unprotected stream because we're not doing any kind of um, protection for this for this data stream. So if we start to kind of accelerate the, the situation or make the situation worse, uh, we're going to introduce some loss on the MPLS side as well. So you know, hopefully you don't have this car very often, but you know, in this situation we have a brownout condition on both of these circuits. Um, so as we can see, the graph here is showing us that we're starting to see loss on the MPLS side as well. And in some cases, we're actually seeing loss in, at, at the same time on both of them, uh, where we're in, entering that brownout condition simultaneously. But, you know, on, on a positive note, because we've got that full uh, duplication of traffic across those tunnels, we're still seeing a 0% loss on the, on, on the overlay on that reconstructed stream on the other side. So, you know, from an end user perspective, there would be no observable difference. Yeah, we'd be on our voice call, voice would be clear, video would be, you know, smooth and unchoppy. Um, however, if this were a unprotected stream, you know, either you didn't have a Silver Peak appliance like this in your environment, or, you know, the traffic fell into an unprotected bucket, you can see like we have situations now where, you know, this loss is starting to get more severe. Um, so to kind of close this out and take it, take it to the extreme, we're actually going to introduce a 3% loss on both of these circuits simultaneously. So I'm going to increase that there. And you should start to see these, these graphs here uh, jump up a little bit, right? So we're jumping up to about 3%. And again, you know, the, the, the observed, the uh, end user observation here is still a 0% loss. Because again, I mean, we're only losing three out of every 100 packets with a 3% loss. So the chances of losing the same packet across both those circuits is pretty pretty slim. Um, however, on the um, unprotected stream, you can see that this is a complete, um, you know, outage on this. Not an outage, I should say, but a complete brownout condition here that we're violating our our thresholds 100% of the time now, even with just a 3% loss. So that, that kind of wraps up, and I just wanted to demonstrate to you the power of the forward error correction that the Silver Peak solution provides. Peak, if you want to take back the share for questions, and then we can open up the floor for any questions that anyone might have.